Hi guys, it's Kelly Shalal, registered dietitian and personal trainer of Behind Hungry Hobby. That is my healthy living blog and food blog. If this is the first time that you're tuning into one of my videos, uh, definitely go check it out. It's www.hungryhobby.net. So speaking of the blog, recently I surveyed you guys, all my readers, and the number one thing that they wanted, well, they wanted crock pot recipes and five ingredient recipes. But they also, you guys also wanted health information and new, more nutrition information. And while I feel like I do a decent job at, you know, wrapping that kind of stuff into the blog, it can be kind of hard to write out, you know, 1,200 to 1,500 word post three times a week. Plus, a lot of the information I've already written on and, um, or I've already posted a blog post on and maybe you just don't have a way to search for it in the archives, whatever. So I thought an easier way to get to everyone would be to kind of start sharing more YouTube videos. I've always been kind of against the like head bobble, but I think it would be an easier way for me to share the information that you guys are looking for. So it's New Year's Eve right now, and I have big plans to stay at home with my husband and watch movies and just chill. And instead of bringing in the new year super hungover like I do every other year, I'm just gonna chill. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> um, so since it's New Year's Eve and you know I have a ton of topics I'm gonna cover. A lot of women's health issues, a lot of general health issues, uh, heart health, cholesterol, uh, anything, you name it. But I think because again, tomorrow is New Year's Day, I think the best way to probably start would be to be uh, discussing diets, right? And the number one thing I want to discuss right now is calorie counting. So I have a I have a few posts on the blog regarding calorie counting, and I will link to them under this video. But what I kind of want to go over is how to deter I guess how to determine what number of calories you're at. So I've told this story multiple, multiple times on my blog, but before I was a registered dietitian, in fact, as I was getting into nutrition, I had gained some college weight, you know, 15, 20 pounds, and wanted to lose it. And I had a friend who, who always counted her calories, and I didn't really know what that was, but it looked time-consuming. And so I thought, well, there's got to be something online for this. And there was, of course, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with counting calories. Maybe... Many of you have dabbled with counting calories back and forth or counting your macros or something, which I can get into maybe like what macros are in a different video. We'll kind of stick with calorie counting. And the number that it spit out was 1,200 because, of course, I set it to like lose weight as fast as possible, which we all want to do, right? Lose weight as fast as we possibly can. So I set it to like the minimum amount of time frame it gave me and like the minimum amount of calories it gave me and that's what I started shooting for. And I thought if 1,200 was good, then 1,000 must be better, right? And so initially I lost weight pretty quickly, but then I lowered, lowered, lowered my calorie until I got where I want. When I finally got to where I wanted, it, it took a lot to maintain that, right? I had to continue eating that same amount of calories. And... That is because basically what I did was wreck my BMR, right? And so if you've ever yo-yo dieted in the past, lost weight, and gained it right back, then likely it's because you – well, not likely. There's a lot of different things that could be going on, but one thing could be the calorie load in itself. I have clients tell me all the time, that's too many calories, Kelly. I'm not going to lose weight on that many calories, Um Especially men, they want to do 1,500 calorie diets. Females want to do 1,200 or less. And really, that's too, too low. And so the reason that that's too low is we have something called a basal metabolic rate. So your basal metabolic rate is the minimum amount of calories required in order to keep you alive. Minimum, right? And that's not like walking around or doing anything. It's literally laying in your bed comatose, keeping your organs pumping. That's it. So the problem with that is if you undercut that number, your body kind of works like a thermostat regulator. And so if it sees you undercutting that number, it's going to become more efficient at burning calories to keep you alive. So it's not about burning fat at that point. It's about keeping you alive. So that's called your basal metabolic rate. Again, the number of calories requires to keep your organs pumping if you were laying comatose in the bed. Now, 
Although your calorie counters may calculate weight and spit out a very low number, likely those numbers are much lower than your basal metabolic rate or BMR. Your BMR is dependent on a lot of different factors. So one is just your overall body size, right? The bigger you are, the bigger BMR you're going to have. The smaller you are, the smaller BMR you're going to have. And that's both height and surface area. And actually, the taller you are, the more surface area you have. So the bigger your body size is going to be. Or the, yeah, and then the bigger your BMR is going to be. Body composition. You've heard the saying that muscle burns more than fat. That's absolutely true. In fact, muscle takes a, quite a bit more calories just for maintenance. We're not even talking about building muscle, but just to maintain your muscle mass requires quite a bit more calories. I used to have the stat memorized, but I don't have it memorized anymore. I think it was like it's more than 7%. It was, it was a pretty significant amount of um, calories that take to maintain muscle mass. So one of the reasons that males typically burn more calories than females is because they have higher muscle mass. So compare like a average American male who just, you know, runs, walks, like general exercise to a female bodybuilder, <laughs> likely she's going to be gaining or burning more calories. Her metabolic rate is going to be higher than uh, that standard male, right? So muscle mass plays into a role. So gender does play a role because our hormones work differently. Our thyroid hormones are controlled differently. And, but also females are generally smaller and generally have lower muscle mass and therefore their basal metabolic rate or metabolic rate is lower. Age. So your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, actually decreases 0 to 3% every decade. Part of that is the general process of aging, part of that is thyroid hormones, and another part of it is loss of muscle mass. So again, are there outliers? Absolutely. There is that 60, 70 year old bodybuilder dude at the gym who probably has a higher metabolic rate than most, right? But in general, your climate uh, and temperature that you're in can also play a role. So actually the colder temperatures are going to have you burn more keeping you warm than if you're in a warmer temperature trying to keep you cool. Again, that stuff doesn't matter as much, but still plays into a role. Hormone levels are huge and we're not just talking any piece. We're talking thyroid hormones, sex hormones, adrenal hormones. All of those are going to play a role into how your metabolism is working. And part of the way that your BMR metabolic rate gets damaged is through the control of those hormones, which we'll talk about in a minute. The last thing, and there are others, but the last important thing is the health. So a severe fever, extreme illness is also going to actually increase your metabolic rate. And there are a few things that can also increase your metabolic rate, like certain stimulants. Uh, not so much caffeine, but tobacco definitely increases metabolic rate and a few others. And that's one of the reasons why when you quit smoking cigarettes or someone decides to quit smoking cigarettes, they may gain weight, even if they're not necessarily eating more than they're typically used to. And that is because um, cigarettes, I don't remember if the nicotine in it, something in it, I think it's the nicotine, actually increases your metabolic rate. So it's not that it just actually keeps you distracted from eating, but it, there is an effect on the metabolism there. So when we're talking about metabolism, I'm mentioning BMR, and I mentioned metabolism. So your total daily energy expenditure, your total metabolism, I like to refer to totally daily, daily energy, energy expenditure, so the amount of calories that you burn all day, is made up of mostly that BMR number. Okay, so mostly just keeping you alive, keeping your organs pumping, right? Then you have movement throughout the day, and that's just like walking around, etc. Then you have exercise on top of that, right? Because exercise and movement are kind of two different things, right? The three-mile run is different than the movement that requires you to just, I don't know, come from my office to go get a drink in the refrigerator in the other room, right? Uh, just to kind of keep you sitting there working, etc. There's also the thermic effect of food. So more protein actually requires more calories to digest than carbs or fat. So there's certain aspects of food, spicy food, although not very minute, that can temporarily increase the amount of calories that you're burning throughout the day. So let's go back to that BMR because I said that's the biggest piece of the equation, right? So what happens if your BMR say, and I actually plugged mine in, so the first thing is, is these are really inaccurate, but I actually plugged my current body composition into 
three different BMR calculators. And there are different ways that are calculate that BMR can calculate it. But website one said 1399, website two said 1501, and website three said 1338. So the big difference between those numbers, 1399, 1501, and 13388, is not really anything. I mean, you can see there's like 100-ish galleries there. But the difference that we need to focus in on is none of them say 1200, right? So what happens when you start eating 1200 when your body requires 13 to 1500 just to pump calories, just to make your organs live and your, I'm sorry, your organs work just while you're sleeping? just not even moving? Well, your body is actually going to become more efficient with calories. And so what happens when your body becomes more efficient with calories, although that sounds like a good thing, in today's society where we have a billion <clears throat> calories available to us, it's actually not really a good thing. We kind of want to be inefficient, right? We want to be burning through calories like it's our job and not conserving them for every last moment. And that is what your body will start to do. Thyroid hormones will change, so different hormones in the body will lower and start to direct your, basically, metabolism to start going slower, be more efficient, and it will do that, and so you'll start to actually make it harder and harder to both maintain and lose weight, so there's two parts that you want to take away from here. One, the faster you lose weight, usually the lower your met metabolic rate is, usually the faster you put it back on. <clears throat> Whereas the slower you lose weight, the higher the calorie intake is, usually the longer that you can actually keep it off, or at least do so without making it really, really hard. So that's number, those are the two things that you need to pay attention to. So what is it, what number should you be shooting for? Well, I'm not a huge advocate of calorie counting anymore because of kind of the way that it drives away you your understanding of what your hunger cues are right little kids they don't need us to tell them when they're hungry and full they know and they stop eating when they're full but kind of calories and this can be a whole nother video especially because my voice is literally about to go out this could be a whole nother video but it, it it has its benefits in the fact that you can learn what kind of calories are in food you can learn what kind of is there protein in this food or fat in this food or sugar in this food? And like what, like if you haven't paid attention to those things before, it can start teaching you those things. It can also start teaching you what has a huge calorie load, like maybe five spoonfuls of, you know, peanut butter a day or kind of cutting into your calorie load, right? Those kind of things. So it can be good, but it also has some downsides, which I feel like I'll cover in another video. But one of the biggest ones is teaching people to go by numbers instead of, um, learning your hunger cues and that's what it did for me I would eat when I was not hungry because I had calories left in the day and I would uh, avoid eating when I was starving because I wanted to save up calories in the little bank and that's not a way to live your life and not a way but if you're new to weight loss if you're new to learning about nutrition and calorie counting is the way that you want to go a <clears throat> I definitely say you know with my nutrition clients what I do is I do a whole hormone and metabolism assessment. And I think, you know, that's probably a good idea for just about anybody out there is just to sit down with an RD that does that kind of thing and just check out to make sure that, you know, everything, there's nothing that's going to be standing in your way. You haven't already damaged your metabolism. But say that you're brand new to this and you just want to start tracking calories, I urge you to figure out what your BMR is and do not eat under that number. In order to lose weight, you need to eat in between your BMR and your total daily energy expenditure. Again, your total daily energy expenditure is going to be made up of not only your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, but also how much you work out, how much movement you have throughout the day, what kind of calories you're eating. And that's just, you know, kind of the tip of the iceberg. And so the more movement you get, the more exercise you get above that BMR, the more calorie deficient you can create. But you don't want to go under that because you do not want to tell your body that you're starving. So as we get into the new year, if that's the direction you go, um, definitely shoot me an email if you have questions. You can email me at hungry, H-U-N-G-R-Y, hobby, H-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com if you've got questions on how all of that works. 
this information is not, you know, not intended to substitute medical advice by any stretch of the imagination. It's just intended to give you some general information. So uh, I'll be doing a lot of these videos. I'm hoping to do them. Do I want to commit to twice a week? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I'm even going to edit this when I have a coughing attack back there. But if there's topics you want to see covered, please let me know. Some topics I have planned are definitely going to be a whole series on amenorrhea, because that's a huge thing, a whole series on fertility, a whole series on um, heart health, bone health, etc. So I'm going to talk about a lot of different stuff that I just can't really make into the blog, especially with the recipes and things like that. So if you've got, you can always comment on this video, shoot me an email, comment on the blog, let me know what questions you have, and definitely a whole series on period health, so yay for a woman's health. <clears throat> All right, guys, so I'm going to go get to enjoying my New Year's Eve and take care of this scratchy throat, and um, I'll see you again soon. All right.